bringing the knowledge that the familiar spirits had channeled through to the German scientists, bringing that knowledge now over here to work on things that we could have never done without outside help. Literally, literally making men the drivers and the horsemen of the chariots of the king who is to come. We mentioned Warner Von Braun. Um, I would mention here um, Jack Parsons. Have you ever heard of Jet Propulsion Laboratories? Uh, there was this idea that actually it was named Jack Parsons Laboratory. Uh, he was a rocket scientist uh, about 60 some odd years ago. Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard, the father of Scientology, okay, this occult thing. Um, they were both disciples of guess who? Aleister Crowley. They were trying to recreate the portal opening that Crowley did to meet Lamb, and they had an agenda. They wanted to introduce to the world a spirit, a goddess spirit that they called Babylon, the female, society, uh, female messiah that was going to take over the world. So we have Jack Parsons, an occultist, a student of Aleister Crowley. We have Werner von Braun uh, and all these scientists with all this secret knowledge. And now all of a sudden we hear about a, um, a place called Area 51. Now, I don't have documents on Area 51. I've never been there. But if I were to guess, which I don't like to do, but if I were to guess, I would say that it's highly possible that elements of our government, elements probably of other governments in the world, are working on things, flying machines, craft, that under normal circumstances we would have never figured out. And now, now we're figuring things out. And I think some of the things that people are seeing in this world that they can't explain, I think that's what they are. Done in secret, the chariots of the gods being built right here in order to facilitate a new world order. And God promises this as his form of destruction. Isaiah 66, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots, like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Jeremiah 4.13, Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. 2 Kings 23, And he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the sun at the entering into the house of the Lord by the chamber of uh, Nathanmelech, the chamberlain which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. Ezekiel 23, And they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons, and wheels, and with an assembly of people, which shall set against thee buckler and shield and helmet round about. And I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgments. And these, all of these, the description of these chariots and this army that comes with these chariots. Jeremiah says they come out of the north country. Joel says they come. They are the northern army. And that was where Ezekiel described these cherubims with their wheels, the chariots of God, as coming out of the north, an invasion is going to take place. And at some point, I think we're going to see some very dangerous, I think we're going to see signs in the heavens. I think there's going to be an occult manifestation associated with UFOs, these chariots of the gods, and, and all of these things. At some point, everybody in the world except true Christians are going to stop believing the Bible. And they're going to believe all these manifestations and all of these other things along with it. They're going to believe that. And I want to tell you that, and, and some, and now I may be totally wrong on this. I should have started out in this video saying I might be totally wrong on this. I may be totally wrong on this, but I think this is what the Bible's warning us about, about what is coming down the road. And I think we ought to be prepared because we know that a great and terrible battle is going to take place. We know that a deadly army is going to invade this world, the fourth kingdom. We know that. Be prepared and don't be afraid. There is a story. The prophet Elisha and his, and his servant. 
And they were being invaded. It was an invasion taking place of terrible armies with their chariots. Second Kings chapter 6. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, and behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he said, Fear, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, and he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and in saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Now, here's what, and, and, and I like this, because the Bible says, you remember when one-third of the angels gets kicked out of heaven with all their chariots and everything like that? One-third of the angels leaves two-thirds up in heaven. Literally, there are more that be for us than more that are for them. As a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, you are on the winning team. And if you're not born again, if you haven't trusted this Bible and Jesus as your Savior, and you can believe all the UFO stories and all the New World Order stories, and you can believe all the stuff that you want to, but if you do not believe the Scriptures in God's saving grace, you'll be surrounded with no help. How do we become saved? The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. At the right time, in the right place, when God is ready and you're ready, you call upon the name of the Lord. This is Pastor Mike. I hope you don't think I'm crazy, but I think the Bible is trying to reveal things to us, preparing us for last day's events. Let's be ready. This is Pastor Mike. God bless you. I love you. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.